Welcome back everybody. As you guessed from the title of the video, as well as the thumbnail, this is what we're testing out today. So this is a newish load as of when I'm recording this anyway, from the folks at AAC, which is America's ammunition company. And the thing that got a lot of people excited and asking me about this is what it is, right? So it is a 5.56 chambering, 5.56 NATO, and then a 77 grain Sierra Match King bullet projectile in there. So with that, that brings up you know, nostalgia for a lot of us who are in the military and have used a very similar load uh, while deployed overseas. This load has had wide adoption, at least the projectile anyway, uh, from many services, including the Marine Corps and Army, and has gained a reputation for being a good man stopper, if you will. That said, if you compare it to other offerings out there in terms of what you would expect gel performance wise, this one tends to have a little bit longer before it starts to fragment and open up and uh, compared to like a bonded bullet, let's say. But again, from folks who have actually used it uh, against bipedal threats, uh, again, it has a very good reputation. Um, that said, is there better loads out there? I don't know. But what we're gonna do today is fire it from a short barrel, a 16 inch barrel, get some velocities on it. And then we're gonna hit some gel with it, see how art penetrates, when it opens up, depending on the barrel length, all of those sorts of things. And uh, again, down below, you guys can comment in terms of whether or not you think it's a good defensive load. I will be looking forward to that. But again, the 77 grainer, so heavy four caliber, and uh, we'll see how it does out of a couple different barrel lengths. Chronograph first, then the gel. All right, 10.4 inch barrel, the Brownells HK416 barrel, and the chronograph's downrange about 10 feet. Close to 2300. Let's get the 16 inch barrel. Now we've got the 16 inch mid length stag barrel. There you go. The gel's at about 10 feet. Obviously, we have that uh, HK 10.4 inch barrel. Check it out. Take this piece of tape off here so you guys can better see it. So basically we had our entrance and really the deformation or the fragmentation starts right about at about four inches. And after that, the neck from about the four to nine inch mark, pretty upset just looking down on it. We do have a piece of jacket that broke off right around the 13 and a half inch mark. I was trying to go low to leave some room for the 16 inch barrel. I don't know if I went too low. We'll find out here in a second. But looks like we did go into the second block, and that box pretty darn dark. Let me look at it here in the sun. And it actually looks like it, oh, there it is. It came right out the bottom of the table. All right, let's shoot that one again. Aiming a little bit higher this time. Once again, I'll remove that tape so you guys can get a look at it here. But we definitely had similar wound track, a little bit different. So top there, the, I guess, expansion, SAS fragmentation started a little bit later, right around the five inch mark, goes down again to about the nine or 10 inch mark. We did lose a couple pedals. And uh, let's see where we went into this block. It definitely went in. And there is the final jacket resting place. I'm guessing you guys can see that, but it final block uh, penetration there is right at 21 inches. Same distance, just again with that 16 inch barrel, the extra velocity. Not sure how well this comes across here on camera, but the wound track is definitely nastier. Uh, it opens up a little bit earlier, and this one I'd say probably three and a half inches. It starts to fragment. 
uh, and the permanent wound cavity goes down to about the 11 inch mark. It looks like it turned and actually exited right there, right at 16 inches, but you guys know that better than me, having seen the slow-mo. I haven't. I'm going to shoot another one just to see if we can get it in the block, but uh, this thing is turning. So with that first shot out of the 10.4 inch barrel, it dipped down. This one dipped right. So shoot one more. One more try. Unfortunately, guys, it looks like that wound track looks extremely similar. So, came in here, it broke into two pieces. One piece came out here, and it came right out the top. There is a jacket fragment. The other piece came a little bit more left from the shooter's perspective and went in here. I'm not sure if there's a piece. I'll kind of move it and look, see if I can see it in the sun. Nope. It definitely came out. Interesting. So, uh, that piece there where it exited, is right at about 20 inches. I don't know if we're gonna be able to keep one in the block. I will try one more. Last one, take three. Just looking at it from the top, it looks like we actually caught one, so that's good news. Um, basically, we had one fragment come out right here, stopped at the 10 inch mark, and then again it split. So another piece went down. So this one went like that, another piece went down into the bottom of the gel. I can see it looking through. You guys may not be able to see it with the clouded second block, but it is right there. So with that, we're right at just about 17 inches on the dot for the second piece and the first piece that broke off was 10 inches so nasty nasty wound for sure y'all have seen the chronograph test as well as the gel test with both different barrel lengths of course on the actual package itself it says 2700 feet per second you guys saw the velocity i would imagine if we were using an 18 or 20 inch barrel we'd probably see that we were pretty darn close with the 16 inch so it is definitely getting good power numbers for a 5.56 load. Again, you guys saw the penetration. Some of you guys out there are not gonna be okay with the penetration that we saw there, or you know, the FBI spec, if you will, is between 12 to 18 inches of penetration. Uh, that said, me personally, I tend to want a little bit more penetration uh, just because of basically studying a lot of different shootings out there, including the FBI shooting in Miami, but many, many others that uh, oftentimes, if there's not enough penetration can lead to issues. Over penetration rarely leads to issues. Again, presuming that you're a civilian, not law enforcement in a law enforcement context, that is a very different equation. Um, but for me personally, I would have no issues using this for a self-defense load. Now it should be noted that the folks over at Sierra say that they did design this bullet for accuracy so it's designed for accuracy additionally it was designed to buck wind at distance i.e have less wind deflection than you would expect with like an 855 or 193 and they said that any type of injury or wounding characteristics that it does have is a byproduct not a feature of it so it is not designed as a defensive load but again like i said a lot of folks have used it for defensive and offensive loads uh from what i hear rumor on the street is that this is what took down bin laden whether or not, not this, you know, not AAC, but the actual Barnes load is what did it. And uh, again, it has a very rich history in terms of the bullet and the AAC loading here seems pretty consistent. If you guys are looking for accuracy out of this load, definitely subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. We do accuracy testing pretty much anytime we review a barrel or a rifle here on the channel. And from now on, I have a couple more boxes of this and we will be using it in the reviews that we do going forward so you guys will be able to see accuracy out of this bullet from a broad breadth of different uh, barrels because again every barrel likes different ammo in terms of accuracy it kind of just is what it is and uh, we will definitely be testing that going forward but for now if you guys have any questions you can post them down below in the comments section 
Additionally, if you, uh, you can also post them rather over at my social media sites that you see here on your screen, over at those sites, as well as my daily deals email that we'll get to here in just a second. We will post this stuff up for sale when it comes in stock, because right now it is the cheapest 77 grainers out there on the market that I am aware of. So again, it'll be posted up on my social media sites. Excuse me. All right, we're back from the sneeze break and it will be posted on my social media sites, as I just said, as well as in my daily deals email. If you guys like this type of video and you're not subscribed and you want to see those accuracy results, hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you guys are subscribed and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, make sure you sign up here for my email. And this email goes out once a month and it has all of the videos since the previous month's email. So that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes for my content. And if this stuff goes on sale, comes in stock, any of those sorts of things, as well as the rifles that we use, the pistols that we use, the optics that we use, all of those sorts of things, if they come in stock, we will post those up in our daily deals email. It goes out every day, as the name indicates, and it has six or seven of the best deals that we find around the internet, as well as a good meme or two. And uh, if, it's in the, if it's in the email, rather, it is the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet, so it saves you guys some time and hopefully saves you some money as well. And uh, with that, that's all I got. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.